I'm told that my care comes in silos. My autism association can't ask my doctors what they said. My doctor can't ask my dentist. It also works in other ways because I can't find the right words to describe who I am. There are some things about me some people find hard to hear. I experience differently, and this means I communicate differently. With dialogue, we can find our common ground. Once we do, you will learn that I am experiencing the world in a way that I have to accept painful moments often. I need someone who can explore how it is painful when they practice on me, so we can dissect the practice and expand the positive parts. To do this, I will lead you through who I am, so that if I shut down as a patient, you can care for me properly. I look forward to learning new, even more, effective ways of overcoming my challenges with touch, noise, and bright lights. To do this, I need to know we'll both be safe, and I'm going to be better at keeping you safe from me than me safe from you. I want to take the Hippocratic Oath for our relationship. I want to actively support your well-being, physically, mentally, and emotionally. I know I have accidentally caused problems in these areas in my past. I want to know we're working together to lessen any effects I cause by asking for accommodations with my care. This will also show me how you practice reciprocity and I will be able to fit your method. Further, we will also set up a pattern so I know how to recognize when you are supporting me. I hope that I can end the trauma that dental visits currently are for me. I am prepared for this to happen slowly. I am prepared to suffer along the way. I need to show you first as a teacher, so that your competence regarding my differences allows me to be taken care of, even if I shut down, and so we can maintain a positive rapport, even if I am hurt when I shut down. Being the coordinator of my own care is good, but I only have the capacity to act as a coordinator until I start being a patient. As soon as I begin receiving care, there is a considerable risk of me shutting down. In those vulnerable moments, having been a coordinator with you will improve how easily I can change the nature of trauma alienation, and burnout dental visits cause me. Continuing to demonstrate that a reciprocal process could help me in the clinic to manage my sensory and cognitive overload during my care contextually. Ideally, I will reduce the overall amount of time I spend interacting with my healthcare providers due to this reciprocal process. This mutual process will increase the quality of care I receive because there will be minimal communications breakdowns. Communications will work all the time during my appointment. In summation, I will overcome the major challenges I still face at the dental clinic, if you will help me. To help me cope with difficult sensory environments, dental professionals and autism strategists have helped me assemble a toolkit, for which I am thankful. I bring a bag of items to support me in dental environments, 
so I can function appropriately. Well, I have found ways to reduce the impact of bright lights, noise, and touch at the clinic, these stimuli are still significant challenges I always face. I will always face them. However, I know I can develop collaborative practices to help me function in this environment. My sensory difference, as well as time, money, and communications struggles currently cause me to shut down when my capacity to use any or all of them is overwhelmed by my environment. Our relationship is about communication and my sensory difference. Coping with the communications and sensory processing issues causes me to shut down when the social norms indicate that I'm expected to respond to questions I'm asked actively. In these contexts, my thinking that underlies communications is also a struggle. I look forward to figuring out, in an interactive way, what accommodations will be most helpful to me, and how best to use them to support my communications and cognitive abilities at my dentist's office. It's frightening how different my sense of touch is, especially how care providers act with the expectation that I don't experience touch the way I do. I need you to set aside your own expectations of what I feel, because it's not how you feel, or how other people feel. To overcome this difference, we will collaboratively explore how I differentiate between soft and firm touch, rough and smooth, pain and pressure, and more. As these change for me depending on my amount of rest, the amount of sensory stimuli I have coped with before arriving at my appointment, and the resulting amount of energy I have, I need a simple, mutually respectful process that allows us to safely explore this at the start of each appointment. We will work to alleviate my fear of your touch and help me accept, endure, and alleviate the differences I have with my sense of touch throughout my appointment. I am thankful for the good things which helped me thus far and your continued willingness to help me improve my experience. I am still enduring and I will continue to endure, especially with your helpful attitude. I still encounter major challenges almost every time I visit the dentist. Currently, I am experiencing more frequently inclusive care. Success is becoming more common. By the time we reach a successful practice, my cognitive and sensory challenges caused by the environment will no longer obstruct my well-being. Clarity around my choice to proceed with priorly agreed upon care can be meaningfully, collaboratively established and can support me when I have shut down as a reaction to trauma I experienced. Trauma that you could only know about if I tell you, but I shut down before I can tell you I experienced it. I am still enduring and will continue to endure. This includes moments that continue for me when the actual moment has ended for you. I hope that I can eventually no longer endure the trauma that dental visits currently are for me.